So one of my customers asked me to source them a 12 volt power supply for our laptop uh, the other day. Um, I did do, I bought them an OEM uh, power supply for their laptop, so it's original equipment. Um, I always suggest that's the best way to go down because buying from a supplier from eBay, um, Amazon, those sort of sites where it's coming from, um, a third party, we as pack testers kind of know that they're not always the best to use. I'm not saying all of them aren't, but there are a lot of companies out there that import from other countries and they're not up to standard. Now, as I said, I bought one um, for my customer, but decided to do a little experiment and ordered one myself, thinking that what would Joe Public do and just look for, not the cheapest, not the most expensive, but one that looks okay. Um, it was actually on Prime, this particular one, and I bought it, came next day, and uh, let's have a look inside just to see what this one's like. So I've cut the tape, let's open the box. Ooh. It's all there. Plug in IEC lead. Power supply. Correct adapter. Lots of instructions there. Information, that's good. IEC lead. Looks okay. Looks all good. I'll just plug it in and go. Oh, should I? Should I just check this? Power supply. An IEC lead, just a little bit more. Taking a look at this adapter close up, we can see it looks like all the information's there, but actually we've got a model number, but there's no maker's name on it at all, anywhere on there. So if something happens to these and they become unsafe or trading standards picks up on it to say they're not safe for UK use, um, they're not going to know where they've come from. So they can't contact the supplier and say, do something about it, recall them. Um, all they've got is a model number to go by, which isn't particularly great. A manufacturer's name is ideally better um, to have, so you can recall something like that and you've got more guidance to go by. It's got the information on there, it's 12 volt, 5 amps. Um, it says indoor use only. And then we start reading a little bit more. I don't know if you can read that. It says indoor use only for use with, is that with? With IT, I think. With IT equipment only. That's very hard to read. And that's zoomed in quite well. Now, apart from it being, I suppose, bad grammar, but it's... The um, spacing between the words is really quite poor, so you can't actually read it properly. And it's actually quite blurry, just like these symbols down the bottom here, um, the, the the marks. Um, you can probably see it better on this one. It like It's like they've photocopied it and um, stuck it on, because they're, they're just so blurry. The information just it it just rings alarm bells. So, I I would recommend to a customer not to use it. We've got a HP one here just to um, this is an original equipment. Um, so a HP adapter. You can see already the difference in the quality of the writing. How nicely spaced it is. How clear it is. All the information there of what you need. And then we get this, and it's just. It just looks wrong. I'm not saying the components are poor inside, but you can pretty much bet they are. Even going by the weight, the HP, though it's smaller, the weight of the HP, you can tell it's probably got a lot more quality components in there as opposed to this light, tacky feel um, adapter power supply. So, yeah, that's kind of saying, don't use me, go original. 
I'm going to take a look at the plug in the IEC lead now that connects to the adapter. Um, I was going to do a electrical safety uh, electrical test on it um, just to see what the um, earth resistance like, the polarity, the insulation resistance. Um, but do you know what? I'm getting further and further into looking at this adapter and uh, IEC lead. Even the cable feels really thin and flimsy, but um, we're just going to have a quick look inside um, my manky old screwdriver and um, just take a look at the fuse. Now, to I suppose Joe Public, they would see that and say, yeah, it's got a fuse in it, it looks fine. To me, that's already ringing alarm bells. Um, it just doesn't look right. Now, I'm struggling to get that out there we go so let's take a look at that fuse okay so it's got a 13 amp fuse in it let's get the right way yes 1362 a mark on it made by pse whoever they are 13 amps it's the right color for once let me show you an original one You see the difference in length. Size looks different. Doesn't look quite right. I wonder if I can pull these caps off. Right. Oh, there we go. So, oh look. No sand in it. I'm not even sure that's fuse wire. So, um, BBC Road Traders. And there's a couple of guys online, YouTube, that have done experiments with fake fuses. Worth having a look. Um, because when these blow, they blow. They can actually blow the plug out of the socket. Um, they explode, basically. They're quite dangerous, little bombs. Um, they can, it can go one of several ways. It can either blow, um, cause a fire, um, not work at all, and make the cable overheat, and that could then become a, a fire hazard in itself. Um, you could let this overheat and let that become a fire hazard. These little things um, is basically, it's, fuses are there as a safety device to protect the cord. Inevitably it protects um, the end user, but it's, it's there really to protect the cord. And when you get something like this, a fake fuse, they've gone to all that trouble just to save money um, by putting this thing in and putting caps on the end. Now, with this, this is an original fuse, um, uh, well-known make, it's got all the markings on it, it's very similar to the fake one, but I can't pull the caps off this, because what's actually happened is, um, that fuse wire is actually welded to the caps inside, so it's not folded around like the other one was, um, there is no chance of opening that. Now... If I can grab my pliers, what I'll do is I'll actually show you what is inside. So we're going to destroy this one. You can see I've opened up an original fuse. And you can see all that silica sand in there. And you can see that, that is welded in there. So that's the difference. But it's worth going on Rogue Traders, um, or uh, there's some good YouTube clips out there of what fuses can do, um, what fake fuses can do, as opposed to a good one. So to recap, yes, I'll be sending this back to Amazon and asking for a refund. Um, stating why I'm sending it back because it's obviously got a fake fuse in it the whole thing feels tacky not enough information on it and I don't believe it's for UK use it's not safe to use so I'll be doing that and I may even let trading standards know as well so I do get the odd customer who will ask I've got a new piece of equipment surely I don't need to get it pat tested maybe this has answered that question for you now I bought this brand new from a supplier. I don't know the supplier. It's fake. I'm not happy with it. It could be dangerous. So 
if you're buying equipment from an unknown supplier or unknown manufacturer, I would recommend, yes, get it pat tested. Pat test doesn't always mean about sticking it into a pat test machine and checking the resistance. It also means a full visual inspection like I've just done. I haven't done any electrical tests, but has that shown up a fault? Yes, it has. So that's new equipment. So I would say, yes, get it pat tested when you don't know where it's come from. If it's come from a well-known brand like Courier's PC, World Machine, Mart, or wherever, those well-known brands are going to have full traceability of where the equipment's come from. We won't on this. So maybe on equipment like that from well-known brands, you may not want to have it pat tested, but it's have it documented to say that you've introduced new equipment and it's safe for use. Okay, so when it com time comes around that you do have to have that electrical inspection, get it included then. But if you're buying a new and you don't know where it's from, it doesn't take long to have a look at it and check it out. Look what could have happened. It could have been fatal. That could have exploded, could have caused a fire, whatever could have happened. It's not safe to use. As a business, you have the Health and Safety at Works Act to think about. You've got the Electricity at Works regulations. You've got the Provisions of Use of Work Equipment regulations. Loads of regulations to think about before you plug this in. So... I hope that's answered a question for you. Yes, maybe get it pat tested. I say, just a visual inspection, whether you're a competent person, a pat engineer, do a visual on it first. It makes all the difference. I hope this has been educational for you. Thank you very much for watching.